because right now we're going to bring in the freaking frack of Nick and Knack, and that is Tim Luke and Greg Schramm, the appraisal guys. And Greg, of course, is a very good cook, so he probably threw up with what I just said. But uh, you can find uh, the freaking frack of Nick and Knack on the web, Treasure Quest Appraisal Group, tqag.com. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring them in right now this morning. Good Good morning. <laughs> Good, Good morning. morning. I, wait, I, wait. I have. I'm holding my hair back so I can vomit. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't feel like dirtying one more dish, and I just said, you know what? It could all go together because it's going to wind it's, up. Hey, it's going it to all wind... goes together at one point anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's it's right. Fine. It comes. It all comes together anyway. So it was one easy. So. That's it. So I'll give you the recipe one day, Greg. <laughs> well, I, listen. <laughs> Listen, I have done similar things in the past because, uh, well, uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but you know, um, I, I know I'm I'm kind of known because I I I am a personal chef. Uh, everybody thinks because I do some some unusual dishes and some you know very good dishes, they all fancy think that cooking. I yeah fancy. They all think that I eat like that all the time. Do you want to honestly know what my favorite food is? If I had to eat for the rest of my life, what it would be? What would it be? <laughs> The the hot dog. Yeah, well, good. I would eat a, I would eat a hot I would eat hot dogs three Morning, times a day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Well we've got beef, potatoes, and hot dogs out of the way. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Right. <laughs> what a lead. In. That's kind of like my dad was a comedian. He always said he never wanted to go on after any animal act because it's a no win situation. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Still that way today. <laughs> well, That's what I mean. <laughs> our kids. <laughs> well, um, uh, today is um, the day that the Oscars, of course, are. Oh, the nominations. The nominations. Yeah. Yes. So every year, whenever we do, uh, whenever this day happens, there's always something that comes up about Hollywood memorabilia or Oscar uh, memorabilia. And Tim, wasn't there? There was just some, just an Oscar um, uh, that, or uh, you're well, working on a. No, there, there's actually there were four Oscars that sold at auction just in December. And it, it was fascinating because, of course, with the Oscars, they if they are pre-1950, uh, then they can be sold. However, the, there's a caveat because after 1950, all of the winners had to sign a paper that said that the if the, if the individual or their heirs were to sell it, the Academy had first... Uh, right at ten dollars. I think it's ten dollars that they could buy it back for a dollar. Something. You know, like I that. think it's actually a dollar, isn't it? Might isn't it a dollar. dollar? It may have gone up to ten. Inflation. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, but you know they're cheap. They're not going to. They they would do this. But here's the other thing that that's included in that letter is that so if somebody won an Oscar after 1950. Uh, but they also won one pre-1950. It also applied to that Oscar. So it's it's kind of, there's, they, they really don't like people selling Oscars. That's the whole thing. However, there have been a number that have come up on the marketplace. And when they do, it really goes to the, and we've talked about this a lot, it goes to the context. It goes to who is the individual who's receiving the Oscar, what is it for? What was the movie? Was it a pivotal? Uh, why was it important? Uh, all of those things really factor into the value, which is that's part of the entertainment memorabilia side. It's not just the intrinsic or taking a look at something and, and provenance and history and things like that, but also uh, what movie was it? And was it a, was it a big hit? Who was the actor? Uh, or the director or the cinematographer. I mean, there's a number of different Oscars that have come up. Uh, obviously, if it's Clark Gable, that's going to sell for a lot more than if it's a sound engineer for a specific film. So they all vary. But we did, there were four that ended up uh, being sold 
in I think it was profiles in history, and they 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 range anywhere from they're usually estimated at auction anywhere from fifty thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand, and then they end up selling in the at least one hundred thousand to about three or four hundred thousand dollar range. Again, depending on the uh, the individual and the movie, all of the circumstances that go around it. Uh, every year, I think, as it gets closer to the Oscar broadcast, <laughs> they also say, so what is Oscar really made of? And intrinsically, uh, it's, and they're made here in the United States, and uh, they, uh, they don't sell, I mean, to, to make one, it's, I think... I think we, they they oh, come I, out with this. Yeah, we did that, that once. Like, I, yeah, we did. Yeah, it was not very much money, dollars. and it's yeah. and they're just gold plated. It's just a a, right. a gold plated, and it is ten dollars. Ten dollars is the is the going rate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and apparently, um, uh, the the quote is: if you try to sell your Oscar, you'll get a call from Oscar's attorney, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he'll make you an offer you can't refuse. You have to sell it back to the Academy well, for ten dollars. <laughs> well, th- yeah, but that's a, that's a public auction. So yeah, I was going to uh, say, it, I bet you on the private market, uh, correct. It, 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 it's it's it it, it will happen because pe- if people will pay that in an auction, then they'll come up with that in a private sale as well. They definitely will, and so. That also becomes a difficulty, or that al- not a difficulty, but it becomes a consideration when we are doing estates, or you know, what is this Oscar worth? And you, there's a caveat that we put into the report. Well, you couldn't do it legally. You would have some legal issues selling it in an open auction format, but there is a value on the private market. Is that if it were to be sold privately, that the then what would the value be? So there's there's some you know it's it's <laughs> it's always when we are looking at uh, especially memorabilia, but but Oscars in general, it, because of the whole Academy watching, you can't you can't just go out and sell it if it's after 1950. So th- but you can sell it. it. It's not that it's illegal to sell. You would just have legal problems if you sold it publicly. You would I, just you know have to I, be careful. I would think if uh, let's say a, a famous actor uh, died, all right, and had three Oscars mm-hmm. and handed it down in his estate, and they had uh, and then three children, each each one of them got the Oscar. And they uh-huh. got it. They got it by because it was bequeathed to them by their father or or mother or whatever. I would think that you could go into court and have a pretty good case that uh, the original contract was between the deceased and the academy, not not the estate. But I think what they do sign off on is that it's for that you your heirs are in perpetuity okay. you know that they have this first the first thing so that's where they that's where they get you um but again doesn't say that you can't do a private sale yeah. you know it's just because nobody would know it's just it would it, there's a lot that goes on in the private market <laughs> that a lot of people want to be anonymous and a lot of people don't want that sale recorded or you know out there so that makes our job as appraisers uh, difficult because it isn't public knowledge. And if you weren't in the know and you didn't know what certain things were, you know, you have to ask around and when, and it has happened where we've had to, you know, I will go to Darren Julian of Julian's and say, okay, I have this, if this were to be sold, I'm sure you have some clients. What do you think they would sit, what would pay for it? And, you know, again, taking context into and say, Oh, I know a client that would probably pay, uh, two hundred thousand dollars for that. Okay, great. You know, so you have to kind of go with that, and that makes. Well, here's difficult. a question. Here's a question, and I, this is something that I don't quite understand. Uh, I need clarified. Okay, I won the Oscar in 1948 and 1949 uh, for for my for my great performances in two movies, and then I won my net my third Oscar in 1952. Right. So does that does that mean that my Oscars in 1948 and 1949 have to go back to the Academy for 10 well, years? Well, yeah, it could. It, it Nobody's ever really challenged that. It becomes difficult. And uh, I do know of uh, an instance where the, this there was an Oscar that did come up and that it was a little difficult. <clears throat> but 
Um, the Academy didn't challenge it, and that was one of the Oscars that was in the sale in December. <coughs> Excuse me. And they don't know that it was, I don't think it was ever challenged. So that could be a precedent. It, it just depends on the auction company, too, because you have to remember a lot of these auction companies have. Uh, a very good, let's say, good working relationship or want to have a good working relationship with the Academy, and they don't want to do anything that's going to um, really sour that relationship. So they want to make sure that they do everything by the book and everything because they do, a lot of the companies, uh, auction companies, do rely on the Academy for a lot of their historical data. So when things come up, they're able to go through some of the archives at the Academy of Motion Pictures to double check, is this really from this film? Was this this, this? You know, there are some archives that they that they um, make available. So it is, it is something that it's a very, very gray area, which is... Yeah, and I guess crazy. it's kind of like we not are. wanting to bite the hand that's feeding you. <laughs> it's yes, kind of the... Yes. Kind now, of, now... Well, could something like this year in the Oscars? It looks like there's not going to be any 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 host for the Oscars this year. So mm-hmm. does does this make this year's Oscars any different because someone might win an Oscar that there is no no host for the first time? Does that make it any more in province anymore? I, I think what it does is that it adds a little bit. Like there was uh, one particular. Uh, I think the host not not so much. I think that. If a movie wins that when, let's say, one particular movie was slated to definitely win, but another picture mo- wins out, that becomes part of the history. Um, that That's what one of the Oscars in December, uh, and I forget the name of the movie, but one of the Oscars in December was up against uh, Citizen Kane for Best Picture, and it beat out Citizen Kane. And that's a major thing. I mean, that becomes, that's why, that's like, wow, that, that's what this, this particular Oscar is known for. I mean, you know, there's, there's things like that that do, um, do play into it. But I think, you know, when you have a host or, you know, and I'm sure whoever won the Oscar that one year when the streaker went across the stage, I mean, that's okay. probably part of the interesting, uh, interesting part of the background of the piece. But it's more people uh, really go for who is the who is the individual receiving it, what were the circumstances? Again, uh, first, if it was the the first African American actor or actress winning an Oscar, I mean that would be something that would be great, you know, or things like that. Uh, and d- just depends on the level of celebrity and what it is. So it's it's fascinating because the entire thing. Um, and provenance uh, as well, well. Provenance. That, that will and provenance but it it is it's it's i think the oscars today it's it's much more of a how hard has people how, how hard have people uh campaigned basically to win this and uh, you know it's it's because there you have all these other you have the golden globes and you have the critics awards and you have the people's choice and you have directors awards and you know there's so many that are out there but you know we were talking with a group of us the other day um or we have a little movie club and most of the people they say oh we don't want to watch anymore it's more it's just very political it's like who's who's campaigned most who's put themselves out there it is it really about talent is it really about this or is it really about that and i mean you everybody has an opinion and that's fine but I still enjoy it. I still like to see, okay, this is this is what's going on. This is what's happened, and uh, yeah, it should be interesting. <laughs> I, I I just used to like to watch the show. I'm old enough where I can say, I used to watch it when uh, when Johnny Carson hosted it many many yes. many times. I used to. I mean, David Letterman, uh, Billy Crystal. Uh, Billy Crystal, I, mean, I loved him. You know, I, the, <laughs> there's there's so many people out there that can that can host it. Uh, and 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 that's to me what makes the show entertaining, is when you have a great me host uh, who can interact and move the show along. That that's what makes that show special, and it's better. It's a better show to me than than any other awards show, even though the Tonys are a pretty good show as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, yeah and, because you see a lot, especially when they keep it moving. But I think that's very important. And that's a that's a difficult job. That hosting job is really about, okay, we've got to keep it moving, let's go, and keep it funny and have fun with it. I always loved what Billy Crystal did. I thought Ellen DeGeneres was fun. You know, I mean, there are people that you can remember, and then there are people that you just don't. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. All right. Okay. Well, we, 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 beat the, we, we beat the Oscars to death, but that's okay. There we go. We, and and I, I will just, I'm going on morning. record. I will go on record right now as saying that that, that my my three Oscars will never be sold. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's right, honey. They're right there. They're right there the on bed. the mantle. They're on your side of the bed. That's right. right. They're there in perpetuity. Okay. <laughs> we'll speak. To, we'll speak to you guys next week. Have a great week. Have a great week. <laughs> Have a great week. Take, Take care. Take care. Uh, Tim Luke and Greg Straub, the appraisal guys, the frickin' frack of Nick and Knack, TQAG.com, with appraise this.